Resolution 623-18. Resolution 623-18 authorizes the Office of the Mayor to enter an agreement with the State of Hawaii Workforce Development Council pursuant to Hawaii Rice Statutes Section 46-7 for Rapid Response Activities. The Memorandum of Agreement with the Hawaii County Workforce Development Board will specify the scope of services, cost, and billing protocols and reporting requirements for activities associated with the volcanic eruption in Lower Puna. Communication 953, introduced by Ms. David by request, waived FC. Council Member David. Move to approve Resolution 623-18. It's been moved by Council Member David, seconded by Council Member Eoff. Council Member David. Thank you. And this uh, resolution was uh, requested a waiver because of the urgency. And uh, Mr. Gyotoku, thank you for coming. And could you please explain uh, briefly what this is for? This agreement, oh, Neil Gyotoku, Housing Administrator. Uh, this agreement will allow the county to uh, enter an agreement with the Workforce Development Council to receive funds for the rapid response team. Um, this is a team that comes down. Um, we would help, these funds would help defray some of the costs. Uh, we'll go out into the community, uh, help those that are being impacted by the lava flow. For example, businesses that are being closed, uh, employees would become, could come and uh, receive uh, assistance in helping to fill out unemployment forms. Uh, uh, welfare forms to uh, get housing assistance uh, through our existing housing division. In fact, uh, we've just set up today, uh, June 19th will be, I believe, at Cooper Center Volcano, and June 20th will be in Pahoa uh, Town. The exact location is not yet determined, but uh, those two days, this team from uh, Honolulu will come down and help us uh, meet with the uh, clients out that being impacted by the lava flow and uh, eruption. Thank you very much. Um, I yield for any questions from the council members. Okay. Um, council member Liloy. Thank you. Mr. Kiyotoku, thank you for being here. Um, you mentioned that it would defray costs. What percentage of costs, and are we looking at salary and wages or just operating costs? What are those costs? It is basically some costs, like if we had to rent a place, uh, we had to buy uh, uh, water and things like that. Also to help uh, pay for the cost of flying this uh, special rapid response team from Honolulu. Right now, our county is not set up to have its own rapid response uh, um, team. Eventually in the future, with, uh, if we can get more uh, uh, personnel, we would like to establish uh, a rapid response team. We currently have the American Job Center, which we recently established, and part of it is their duties is to do this rapid response, going out to the communities. Um, we do intend to go into Kona to help those at uh, Manolani uh, that are being laid off, also in uh, Kmart. Uh, we're trying to set up dates for that. The team will go out there. Uh, right now, we're just trying to help. Uh, these funds will defray the cost, some of the costs of flying people down from Honolulu until we can set up our own team. Do we have a timeline on that as far as them setting up and then we integrating our own rapid response team? Um, I don't have a particular timeline. I hope to have it within the year. But um, this funding would just help us for, you know, right now, uh, uh, allow us to get monies from the state to help defray some of the expenditures that we uh, have to incur like that, yeah. Um, hopefully within the year, I want to establish uh, American Job Center, uh, get our Hilo uh, American Job Center fully functional. Uh, and then we're looking at branching off into Kona and establishing a satellite American Job Center in the corner district, yeah, west of Hawaii. And is this a reimbursable cost, or at some point they bring their funds and we supplement with ours? I think at this point it's just that they are providing us an upfront uh, funding to help defray our costs until we can establish our own team. Thank you, I yield. Thank you. Councilmember O'Hara. Um, thank you, Chair. And I, I see this is predicated on the assumption that this is for a lava response 
but there's other other players in here that you just talked about, Kmart closing and Manalani um, laying off workers that um, will be using these funds for. Yes. So this isn't just for the emergency, right? Uh, it, we rushed it because of the lava flow, uh, but it's intended to use forever, whatever events that may occur after this. Uh, for example, Manalani, uh, right now they're not laying off people, but uh, expect maybe in August or so that they'll impact the employees and this team will come out to help those with the, uh, applying for assistance and trying to see whatever assistance we can provide for them. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you. And you say you're um, putting together a meeting for June 19th in Kau and one for June 20th in Pahoa? Uh, no, it's, I oh, think, that's when you'll 19th be. was Cooper Center in Volcano, and I think 20th was in Pahoa someplace. At Pahoa someplace? Yeah, it's right. We're trying to get the uh, places finalized right now. And we'll be advertising and making sure the word gets out to everyone as far as when the team is going to be set up and available. This Basically, is for um, people who are unemployed th as a result of the eruption, impacted by the eruption, impacted by the right. eruption, right. and uh, for them to fill out forms for any type of assistance for unemployment, for workforce development training, uh, housing assistance, uh, welfare assistance. We do have some people coming out to do like job training, mm -hmm. you know, offering them. Uh, Possibilities to enroll in job training and okay. those kind I, of things. I'm just curious how this will play out because many of the people who um, have lost work through this event, uh, let's just look at the um, vacation rental market where people were providing cleaning services and lawn care services and that sort of thing. They aren't necessarily documented workers in many instances. Um, they may or may not be, you know, uh, properly documented. So um, is this going to be helpful to those types of people as well? Yes, it will. We don't require that they be, let's say, registered, that they're receiving unemployment benefits or anything. It's uh, services we're trying to offer to all people on the county level mm -hmm. that are being impacted um, and do try to, uh, you know, they'll have to qualify for each individual program, for example, our existing housing, there are income limits and uh, family qualifications and such, uh, but, you know, we're trying to offer as much services as we can at this point. Yeah. I really appreciate that, and um, thank you for being um, on this piece. I know we've been in this emergency for a little over a month, and um, to get this going, I'm, I'm happy to see that you were able to get this to council so quickly, and we'll be moving on it by June 19th. That is some good news. I, I wish we could be a little more proactive on some other fronts, but that's not up to you or I. Well, I mean, we, as far as the county level and housing, um, we're also looking into different aspects as far as trying to help the people from Puno like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, um, it does have an impact as far as on the other parts of the island, like, the, for example, the hotels are losing some businesses, and uh, there may be some impacts as far as layoffs mm -hmm. and stuff like that, yeah, so... We are going to be looking at trying to uh, get out there and try to offer these services to them. I know you were also working on some immediate temporary housing. I mean, nothing that would be considered permanent um, with um, some Japanese um, connections. We what, are looking that? into this possibility right now. It's just a option that we're looking at. Um, it's a very temporary thing where um, you can put it up in within four hours and remove it within all, one hour. But it's just a house. Like, for example, there are companies that offer some sheds and uh, things like that. But this is just an option being considered. Um, I hate to... Mayor Kim <laughs> has said that he wants to build a new community in Pune, mm -hmm. and we're looking into exploring that option, um, trying it to take it away from the active lava zone one and two. Uh, try to build something that uh, we can offer the people from Pune, especially. 
Thank you. And I'm just going to ask you, did you ever get uh, pricing on the, the, the Japanese temporary housing? It, it, you know, it can be depend on how big you want it and how complex you want it, yeah. Um, if you want just a plain shell uh, with shipping and everything, they were talking roughly about $25,000 each. But the beauty about this is you can take it apart and store it, and you can transport it to a next emergency and set it up again, yeah. Uh, that's the beauty of this, yeah. And you can store it. That's what they do in Japan. They inventory these, please. And whenever there's an emergency, they'll set it up so that they have temporary housing for the people that are affected by the emergency. Yeah. It could also potentially be used um, for temporary um, homeless um, individuals. That's a possibility. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you so much for bringing that information to us. Thank you. Any other discussion? Council Member uh, David. Yes, so Mr. Giotoko, I just had one question, and I know this is just an agreement um, to enter into an agreement, but do you have any idea of the anticipated costs associated with this? They were talking this? about uh, a $25,000 amount that we could use in the year to, uh, you know, use for the rapid this. response. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily we would use all 25000 but as far as is necessary, we would be able to draw from that monies once okay. we set up the agreement. Great. Thank you very much. I yield. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing or hearing none, all those in favor of Resolution 623-18 say aye. aye. All those opposed? Okay, we have eight ayes, one excused. Thank you. Thank you.